Hello. Hello. <laughs> I have Sudi Oaks with me today, and we are going to be talking about time blocking. And we both are coming at it from just really practical and then like also according to our divine design. And then mm -hmm. we're going to give you some oils to help support you in your time, making friends with time, time management stuff in your life. All right. So yeah. Sudi, go ahead and tell us about yourself and what your life looks like, your kids and all that good stuff. Yeah. Hi there. Well, first of all, thank you so much for, for having me. I just feel really honored to be here. Um, I am a mom of four. I have um, a daughter who's 11, two sons in the middle, um, nine and five, and then another daughter who's three. So I am just coming out of this, um, the, the sleepless nights and uh, coming out of this brain fog of just being overwhelmed with, with um, little, little children. So now I'm just heading into the season of hormones and, um, you know, middle school and high school. So I'm excited and looking forward to that. I was telling Nicole earlier that my husband and I are both high school teachers. I'm currently just on a hiatus while I raise my kids, but, um, we definitely feel more comfortable with the older side of kids. So, um, you know, we're both excited about the seasons ahead. So, yeah. I love that. So when you um, are thinking about like time blocking, I think it's important to say that every season of our life is going to look different. And we were discussing that before we hit record. And yeah. it's so interesting because people will like put out these formulas of like, mm -hmm. this is what I do and this is what's successful but then there's going to be somebody who hears that and goes, oh, I could never do that. And so I hope what I share um, helps with that piece of like mm -hmm. going according to your season and your divine design. Um, so like, that's why I think it's important to say like, how old are your kids? Like if you had right. a newborn, your life would look so much different. If right. all your kids were like above 14, your life would look different. If you had kids going to college, totally different. So Absolutely. right now we Especially, have little, littles in the middle, right? right? And so we, we have like, that's the season we're in. Yeah. And you know, and if you're single or newly married and no children at all, right? Like totally people who are adulting just for the first time or, you know, just out of college, this is still an important task and a, an important skill to learn. So this is not just for parents, right? This is for everyone. Yeah. Especially if you're learning to reparent yourself. Right. Not a formula. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. These are principles that then you can take and say, how would these principles fit into my life? And if any principle we share isn't for you, just chuck it. It's right. not going to be offended. Yeah. And I, and something I need to say too is, you have to give yourself grace every day because even if you create this time blocking schedule for the day, the week, the month, whatever it is that you can, um, can do for yourself, if it doesn't go as planned according to your plan, right? Mm -hmm. You have to give yourself some grace because for me, it's all about his plan, not necessarily about mine. So I just, at the end of the day, have to give myself grace and say, Whatever was supposed to happen, happened today. Yeah. And, and be okay with it. Yeah. Absolutely. And it, yeah, we, we say we're on divine timing. Yes. <laughs> like, because I, and I like, love that. Yeah. I have a plan and like, and it's just like, so very, very early on, I learned that I couldn't be like at nine o'clock, we do this at 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. we do this because I get so frustrated. We're late. We're early. We're late. We're early. So that didn't really work. That's why I like this chunks of the day mm -hmm. or like, these are the main things. And I'll let you talk right. about that, but yeah, divine yeah. timing trumps so, our plan every time. Right. So I, um, as I help people through this kind of this concept, I always suggest people take an inventory, a time inventory of their day. Every single person has the same 24 hours in the day. And I just encourage you to write it all out. Like hour by hour, what are you doing? Are you waking up at five or seven or whatever? You know, you spend 30 minutes getting in the shower or getting ready. You know, you, if you're, it's, I kind of think of it like a food log. You're logging every single hour 
or minute. I mean, depending on how, how down to the minute you want to do it. Um, but you need to take note of what your day is actually looking like, because I think sometimes people have an idea like, oh, I, I don't have any time. I have no time to do anything. And then when you look at it, you kind of might have these leaks where you're spending 30, 40, 50, 60 minutes scrolling social media. And, um, and I, I call those, I, I just call those time leaks. So, um, the other thing I like to do is kind of color code it. I'm a visual learner. So, um, I like to look at it like color code it versus, um, like, you know, you choose the color, but like productive versus unproductive time. So that's always helpful too. So, um, the other thing, and I'm going to let Nicole kind of talk a little bit about um, some other things as we get to some big topics here. But um, once we do kind of an, a time inventory and you've kind of figured out like, okay, here are some spots where I could improve. I love for people to write down your top priorities of the day. This could be the top priorities of the month. My top priorities of the day change every day um, based on the week. Um, as I'm sure Nicole's going to kind of talk about here in a minute. Um, but my kids and I always talk about putting first things first. So sleep is such an important piece in our house. So if you're not getting enough sleep, everything else is going to falter and where, and it shows my kids are at an age now where if they don't get the amount of sleep they need, temper tantrums, they're mouthy, they're, you know, they're just not in their right state of mind as many adults. Could probably we could probably say the same about adults too. Yeah, they get they're just miserable. They yeah, what they need their fuse is a lot shorter. Right, exactly. So, top priorities for me, what it looks like is sleep, um, prayer, meditation, um, working, and then like my chores and that kind of thing. So, um, and then we we spend time filling in the gaps or the you know the times that aren't necessarily like top priorities, right? Um, so, and, and I was telling Nicole too, like one of the big things that I struggled with was just meal prepping. I had this aversion to like wanting to sit down and meal prep. Like I just get bored by myself, you know? So I got to together with a friend and every Tuesday we get together and we meal prep. Um, which is phenomenal because I'm like, I want to be able to spend time with people that I enjoy and also get stuff done. Right. So, um, so yeah, time blocking, um, habit stacking, all that fun stuff. So I don't know if I, I love something. that so much because then not only are you building relationships around something that's like mutually edifying and yes. it's, it's like blessing your family and you're probably less likely to just sit around and talk about everything that's wrong in your life. You're like, because you're in a creation space. So you're right. like, the energy is just so much different. I love that. Yeah. Well, and I think for me, I'm a little ADD when it comes to like, I love working with my hands. So I am creative and even my husband used to make fun of me because even to sit down to watch a movie, I would have to be doing something, doing a craft or knitting or just doodling. Holding like, laundry. <laughs> yes, holding laundry. Um, and he's like, just, can you sit still? And I'm like, there's, no, I can't. <laughs> I'm getting better at it. I am. I am. But yes. Yeah. The, the year in the RV broke me of that habit because there wasn't anywhere to go and we would only mm -hmm. watch shows at night after the kids were in bed. And so I'd have to sit still, but yeah, it's very difficult for me to sit still as well. So yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I can relate. Yeah. So some of the oils that I love to use during, um, you know, just when I'm talking about this or actually doing it myself. Um, and pretty much every day. I mean, let's be realistic. I'm like an oil, a very well oiled person. Um, every day, you know, my friends are always like, I think I just got really high off of your oils just walking past you. I'm like, that's great. Like you'll be happy the rest of the day. <laughs> Yeah, you're um, like, uh, we, none of this happens without oils. That right. The exactly. secret sauce. That is exactly. the main 
if I, my chemicals aren't good, then we're all wonky. Right. So um, I love to do in tune and motivate on my feet. Um, it's like, a, you know, I get focused and motivated all at the same time. Um, although in tune's a little strong for some people, it took me a really long time to come to terms with it. And so I actually will make four bottles out of the one, which just kind of like, dil you know, dilute it down a little bit. It's a little less uh, intense. The in tune is intense. Um, so yeah, bergamot, or I'm sorry, motivate. I'm looking at bergamot. Um, motivate and in tune just on my feet, sometimes on my wrists. I like to wear Motivate like as a perfume sometimes too, just because I love it so much. Um, so sometimes I'll be putting that behind my ears or on my neck. Um, those ones are just like, let's sit down and get this done kind of a thing, especially I'm in, in my um, planning stage or helping somebody kind of do this. Um, do you want me to go through all my oils that, sure. I've been, that I was telling I you about? That. Yeah, I think that's okay. great. Um, so I was telling Nicole just before we started recording here is that my main, I, I scan myself about, I don't know, every couple of weeks, I would say. Um, and one of the scans that came up was Bergamot and Melissa and Zendocrine. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. And um, two to three drops of each of those. And by the end of the first week, I was like, whoa, this is amazing. I just felt so different. I mean, I don't, I'm in Ohio. Where are you? Are you in Washington? I think. Is yeah, we're in, yeah, in uh, Eastern Washington. So we're, we rarely get any sun in Ohio during mm. the winter. And that I was just kind of like, I just need some like pick me up of some sort. And then it was funny because it was Bergamot and Melissa. And yeah. then, I mean, Bergamot is like self-acceptance and Melissa's, what is it like? Light? Yeah. And, um, Zendocrine, like the detoxification, like it was just so amazing how it all worked together. And I just feel like I was able to really get into, I think you had mentioned like work of, um, what did you call it? Work of genius or oh, zone, zone of, genius. of genius. Yeah. 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 That's like, from oh, uh, the big leap, the book, the big leap. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Jay Hendrix. So I love that. Yeah. And then, you know, I love, love, love black spruce over my heart and blue tansy, such a good one for inspired action. And just like, again, that's one of those ones, like get stuff done. Right. Like, mm -hmm. and I have this creative mind going all the time. Like my husband, um, has a, has a business outside of what he does and I'm always coming up with great ideas, but he is the, he's the person to actually like go and do it. Yeah. Yes. You we need, need the, the idea person and the implementer. So in philology, we are like, okay, we have spiritual creator gifts and physical creator gifts and, and the heart connects them. And there's like the doer space. Like it's so beautiful because yeah. that, that pairing, you guys will go far in life. Yeah. We just need to work together. <laughs> yes. You want the head and the legs to yeah. be going the same direction. Right. That, ha right. that happens. Yeah. So so those are my, those are like the top ones that we've been, that I've been using, utilizing um, the last couple of days. Elevation has been a big one for me. Um, Copaiba and then black pepper is sitting here on my desk as well. So I love that. So, yeah. yeah. I love how like, okay, so Zendocrine for me, whenever I'm wanting to release anything that doesn't serve me, like mm -hmm. any toxic habits, any, um, you know, old patterns, yeah. gremlins, um, but then also like releasing toxins out of the body. So right. I can imagine you would feel really good taking those oils together. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, Ooh, I want to try that. I love that. So when you say scan, you do the, um, the Zyto scan or the, I, do, I have the Atovi. Atovi. That's what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. So you, it's just like a biofeedback tool for people who don't know, right? Yes. They, it's just, it scans the frequency of your body and, you know, based on how stressed you are, tired or hydrated. I mean, there's mm -hmm. so many factors, right? And then mm -hmm. it just, um, it gives you some oils that are 
that your body needs at the moment. So it, it could change every day. I don't scan every day. Some people, when I do scan them, they're like, I could never do this. I could never have this. I would scan myself 50 times a day. I'm like, I actually <laughs> sometimes forget that I have it. And my best friend will be like, did you scan yourself? Cause I'll be like, I feel a little off today. And she'll be like, did you scan? I'm like, Oh, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Not fun. Yeah. yeah. We go, Oh yeah. Liz, we take our tools for granted sometimes. Yeah. There. I love it. Yeah. And I muscle test for the oils that I need and it's yeah. more linked to emotional stuff. Mm -hmm. So I love using the Itobi, especially for physical things. Yeah. Cause I'm like, Oh, I wouldn't have thought of that one. So yeah. I think it's a great tool. I tend to like people are like, Oh, you can just muscle test your food and stuff. And I can to an extent, but for whatever reason, I feel like when you're working on yourself, sometimes you like need like an outside. I got, I have other people muscle test me for food stuff. Right. But <clears throat> anyways. All right. So I was going to talk about like days of the week and like kind of taking your whole entire month mm -hmm. and like charting it out and saying like, okay, so I learned the, the thing about the days of the week and the energy types through flowology with Janet Marquez. Mm -hmm. And so Sunday is a day where it's more focused on things like play, self-care and family. Mm -hmm. And it's a great day for ideas to come through. So it's a really great day. Like naturally a lot of people plan their week on Sunday, mm -hmm. but just to understand that the energy of that day supports that. And then, but like, say you say you do your planning on Tuesday. I wouldn't, I wouldn't stop that because there's good things about Tuesday that make that a good planning day too. So if you're hearing this, you're like, well, I plan on Thursday. That's okay. This is like just a way to do it. Uh, Sunday has a bright animated energy and it's a great day for new ideas and possibilities. It's the sun. It's connected to mm -hmm. the sun, right? So I love that. Um, so there's great days for, for getting ideas, getting downloads. You know, a lot of people go worship corporately on Sundays. They get inspiration for the week. They bring it back to their, their life. They implement it. So it's, it's a great day for that energy. Monday for me, um, the, it's um, more of like a soft day, a calming day, mm -hmm. a day to gather details and make a plan. I think a lot of people have like this negative connotation with Monday because they're like, hit it hard. Right. Energetically though, Monday is a day to kind of like you get back, like imagine you're going back to work and we do this at home, some of us, right? But you go back to work, you sit on your desk and you kind of have to go, okay, what was I working on Friday? And you like have to reorganize your desk and kind of reassess, make the plan, you're gathering details. And it's a really great day to connect with your tribe. And I think that's really fun because Monday mornings, it worked out for our 7 a.m. calls. And just naturally, and I'm like, oh, first thing I do, I get my inspiration and my meditation time and my, my quiet time. And then I uh, connect with my tribe. It's a great day to like crowdsource, ask questions like, hey, what, yeah. what do you all need from me? Um, even ask, kind of take inventory of your family. So bringing it into the home and saying like, okay, what you've got this practice, this appointment, this thing, or you're kind of seeming like you need a little bit of extra attention, you know, and then planning those things into the week. Um, you can map out like, Big picture things on Mondays is a great day to map that stuff out. Sunday's a great day to do that too, but like you, I usually get the big idea on Sunday and then Monday I sit down and map it out. It's a wonderful day for nurturing and being in that heart space or that feeler energy. And because of that, like it's a great day to start cultivating the things you want to manifest. I also like to break up um, parts of the days and I'll talk about that in a second. But there are some days where, like Tuesday, for example, it has two different energy types. So the morning is more still uh, carrying through that soft, calming energy of like connection and nurturing. And then in the afternoon, it shifts more into a structured day, 
um, where you can be more exact. You kind of look critically at the thing that you had the idea and the plan you made and perfect it. Mm -hmm. So Tuesday is a really great day for um, like starting to like put together your invitations for things or um, writing out scripts for things or you know, really like fine tuning and nurture. So you nurture those ideas, you nurture the people. And then Tuesday's kind of like a get it done. So really like the get, get it done, it like starts happening. Like it starts ramping up on Tuesday afternoon. And then Wednesday is more still that structured energy and perfect it. Um, and you can really work on like publishing, um, editing, things of that nature. So in the home that might look like chore day or days to really like implement your plan, go grocery shopping. And it midweek is a great time to grocery shop, especially if like you did a weekend grocery shop because then you can refresh your produce mm -hmm. and things like that. So Wednesday is kind of the day that I typically plan errands and outings and things like that. Uh, and then, but usually like say Wednesday morning, I would work, you know, in my office doing my business stuff. And then afternoon I would kind of do more with my family stuff. So kind of, you can kind of structure types of times of day. And then Thursday has again, that soft, calm energy, like Tuesday in the morning. And then Thursday is like a swift dynamic move into action create practical um, la things with lasting results. So like implementing your systems. And it's a wonderful time to actually teach the classes. And you're also um, in that connection energy and your feeler. Um, so your, your heart space and then your doer. So more that solar plexus um, sacral chakra where you're like, okay, we're going to do this thing. Mm -hmm. And so I love teaching classes on Thursdays. I love connecting and like like having workshops or um, play dates or things of that nature, like um, where you, you really put everything into action. Like if you want to have somebody over for dinner, Thursday night's a great night for that. And it's funny because we actually have dinner plans this Thursday night. And I was like, Oh, that's so fun. And <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so someone invited us on Thursday. So that was cool. And then Friday you're in that structured, um, I like exact looking um, through things with that critical eye, not in the negative critical, but like that's the editing and perfecting and polishing process again. So this is a great day for proofreading. If you're going to do like graphics on Canva, um, Instagram posts, mm -hmm. things like that, things that you want them to be pretty, like in that Libra Virgo kind of energy, it's like a really good one. So that's like where you can move it forward and make it happen. And that's the physical creator space. So a lot of good work happens on Friday, the actual implementing of things. And it seems so counterintuitive because we try to do that on Monday right. and sometimes can be very frustrated. And then Saturday is still more of that swift dynamic energy, kind of like um, Thursday afternoon. It's, it's that same energy. So I also teach classes on Saturday. I grocery shop. Sometimes I plan the meals on Saturday mm -hmm. um, or plan what groceries to get. I'll sometimes plan out my homeschool, but it's that get it done. So it's not just the like creating a plan from scratch, but like if I already have the kind of the Sunday plan and the Monday plan, that's when I kind of go, okay, I'm going to pull from here. I'm going to do this right. and kind of get it into space. So you can do it according to the days of the week. You can do like time block. I'm going to work in the morning. I'm going to work in the afternoon. I'm going to do this in the evening. Mm -hmm. And I find that because we work from home, we kind of have to transform our home from mm -hmm. like our workspace, our family space. I school, you know, I educate here. So school space, and then it can, it needs to be restful as well. Mm -hmm. So being able to shift from, you know, just like what this part of the day is for helps me a lot to not be working on my business while I should be like looking or like I intend to be working with my kids, you know, and like pouring into them. It just helps me kind of separate it a little bit. Um, then I, you, I sometimes, this is funny, but I sometimes, because I want to multitask and do all the things and then nothing really gets done because I just am yes. not focusing on anything. Um, 
I learned, this is so silly. I will say Shazam. And then oh. I will do, have you ever seen that movie Shazam? Yes. I love that movie. So he says Shazam and he instantly turns into this character, right? Or this superhero. And for me, that's my, it's almost like a, just an instant Mel Robbins five second rule, almost yes. instant. like I can do, I can switch and focus and I do it for 20 minute intervals sometimes. Like 20 yes. minutes seems to be about the time that my younger kids attention span will last. Mm -hmm. So for 20 minutes, I'm going to focus on my business or mm -hmm. laundry or whatever it may be. But sometimes you just need a little like word or phrase or mantra or whatever it is to like really yeah. just get your brain back in like work mode. Right. So totally. Oftentimes you don't, if you're finding like, oh my gosh, I'm all over the place. Come up with something that works for yes. you. So there's somebody who created this method called the Pomodoro method. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what you're talking about is yeah. those 20 minute time blocks. I think he does 25 or 20 and then like a five minute break. Isn't that what it yes. is? Yes. And, that's exactly and Pomodoro right. is like a tomato. So he had like this tomato kitchen timer that you twist. Like they make them yes. and they're like, I've had a chicken one before. Right. Like they're super cute. Um, you can set the alarm on your cell phone. It doesn't have to be, a, but it's nice when it's not connected to your phone. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Anything you can get, even books that aren't connected to your phone, it, like you're not tempted to go into social media land. Right into the time leaks. So yeah, the, um, yesterday we did, I'm in a, a class where we actually break down our business planning and launching around the cycles of the moon, the elements like fire, water, air, oh, yeah. earth. And then, uh, we also, um, go according to like the, the signs in the heavens, like the Zodiac, because mm -hmm. there's different energies with each one. And that's like beyond my scope to teach that, but I really love it because we, we can kind of work with like on earth days, I'm going to feel like this. And on fire days, I'm going to feel like this water days. I'm going to feel like this and air days. I'm going to be like all the ideas, right? I want to learn and I want to teach on air days. So, um, I love that. But then we ended up yesterday actually setting the timer on the call. And we did it, I think, two different rounds of it. And I got more done in those two 40-minute chunks than I've gotten done in so long. And it reminded me, oh, yeah, I used to do this all mm -hmm. the time. So this, again, it's like seasons of life, right? We go, right. I have all these tools. I can't possibly use them all at once, but they right. serve me at different times. Uh, so if you want to know about Pomodoro, you can look it up on Pinterest or online, but it's basically you set that timer for 20 minutes. You work for, or you have a five minute break. So I stood up, I stretched, I did a couple right. sun salutations, yep. kind of did some twists, got some water, went to the bathroom and then went right back to it. And, um, and then you do four sets of those and then you would take a 15 minute break. Yeah. And it's just, it's so cool how, and that's, um, his whole study was around productivity and the brain. And like you've alluded to ADHD and I, like our family, we definitely have very, very fast processing mm -hmm. systems up there mm -hmm. that are just like easily distracted or hyper-focused. So yeah. it does create a hyper-focus, but then, you know, you don't get overwhelmed because, you know, I only have to do this for 20 minutes. Well, and I think it, for me personally, it came out of the, I, I struggled with so many anxious feelings for so long with, I, I, there's just not enough time in the day. I mean, I used to teach this in high school all the time, but staying home, having four kids, like everything just seemed to me just to keep building up, building up, building up. And just within the last couple of years, I've been able to kind of transform it again to you can do 20 minutes or what I, I mean, set a time for whatever works for you, you know, like 20 minutes on five minutes off. Maybe it's, you just have to start with 10 minutes to like train your brain. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for me, it started out as almost like an anxious thing. Cause I'd look at dishes and I'd be like, that's going to take like five hours or even laundry. That's, that's a never ending task. 
Mm -hmm. And I just have to accept that it's never ending. But yeah, you know, you could do it. You, you know, get to the bottom of, of the hamper and a kid brings you their something right. that needs to be washed. And you're like, oh, okay. Okay. Here we go again. Right. <laughs> we laundry, like, because this could be really quick. Um, a friend with four kids color coded her kids, um, like their t- they have a certain color towel. Mm-hmm. And then she just has them wash all their stuff with their towel once a week or twice a week, however it works out. Yeah. Um, and since we were in the trailer, we didn't have a bunch of clothes. I'd already kind of capsuled that down. And so it can really truly be one to two loads. Like it's yeah. not a lot. And so I'm just like, Oh, this is your laundry day. Right. And they just take it from the washer and they dump it in and then it goes to the dryer back to the basket from there. I don't care. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wear it out of the basket, put it in the drawers. That's going to be your own personality. I'm not fighting that battle. Don't care. Yeah. So don't, don't care. Just don't be putting dirty things back into the clean, but other than that, don't care. So I got that from her and that totally set me free Mm -hmm. from feeling like I had to fold all their little tiny everything and spend hours on that. And now it's just Eric and I, we walk like usually he washes and stuff and then I'll go back and hang up and put away. But I love that. Yeah. Because then it just makes it not so overwhelming. Right. Because a confused mind says no, and then it just shuts down, and then nothing gets done. And then the inner chaos that you feel is reflected in your outer life, and then it it affects everything, relationships, everything. Well, and for us, it took a while for me to downgrade everyone's closets even. I came through my growing up it was, and this is going to be really fast growing up. It was, if, if there was any kind of emotion, we didn't deal with it. We went shopping. Mm -hmm. And so my growing up, that's what we did. And I had hundreds of pieces of clothing and it kind of, I mean, I recognized it when I started having kids like, Ooh, this, this doesn't, this doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wasn't buying stuff, but it was other people buying stuff for my kids. And just in the last like two or three years, I've had to say, stop, take them on an experience, stop buying them clothes. But even now that I've downgraded or decluttered their, their dressers or whatever you want to call it, Mm -hmm. there's less choices. There's less laundry and, and everyone's happier. Yeah. Less overwhelm. Yeah. Less overwhelm. Like there's less just anxious feelings altogether. And yeah. I mean, I'm doing laundry a lot free, more frequent, but that's okay. Like, yeah. Fine. Yeah. Well, you, like we were doing it probably the same amount because it was consistent. Like you had more to wash before. Now you're just washing the same pieces more right. often. Cause right. like some people, they will literally get to the bottom of like a 12 pack of socks and go buy another pack of socks. Right. Like right. they won't actually wash their clothes. <laughs> yeah. I had somebody say they just Amazon Prime themselves underwear. I'm like, what? Yeah. What? It's just like on auto them. ship. Yeah. Right. I know like um, people who work, you know, in like North Dakota and stuff like that, they do that. Like they're, they literally just go to the Walmart and get new stuff because they don't have washing machines and they have a lot of disposable income. Yeah. But it's not good for the, the environment. No. I mean, yeah. It's, it's so interesting. I love to, the more we simplify, the happier we are. Absolutely. That idea from our parents' generation that came from the great depression mm-hmm. of like, I have to have it. Like, like my, I remember my mom's generation, like her friends, like they would build a new house and they'd have walk-in closets mm-hmm. and like, you know, or the woman would have two closets, like they'd use the guest closet and things like that. And I'm like, my closet on our trip was this wide and everything had to fit in there. And one of those little three drawered um, stair light containers. And that was my whole wardrobe. Right. So I don't know, you can, you can adjust. Yeah. I mean, I, for me, I started watching, well, probably 10 years ago, I read um, um, Marie um, Rondo. Thank yeah. you. I was like lost her name there for a minute. Um, but at the time I was just so overwhelmed 
just with the, just with the thought and idea of having to go through everything. Right. Um, and then just, I recognize it, this is going to be a process. This is not an overnight thing. Mm-mm. This is going to take years, but ever, I'm just going to work 20 minutes a day or whatever, yes. you know, yes. and I'm going to do it. And yep. my kids are happier. I'm happier. I mean, every, every couple of months I have to continue to keep doing stuff, but yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's life changing. But yeah, my mother-in-law is great about it. She'll just like, like weekly, I think goes through something and gets rid of a couple things. And she, but she went through this stage where she had to go through her parents' house and go through mm-hmm. like you know, years of, mm-hmm. of accumulation. She's like, I'm not doing that to you guys. And we're like, thank you. Right. And she has a lot of books. And so okay. like when, when she passes, she's got a lot of books, but we all love books. So. Right. Yeah. One thing I was going to say, oh, the, um, when I got married, this gal gave me a audio cassette series. <laughs> so how long ago it was <laughs> on, um, on like, it was geared around the Proverbs 31 woman, but she basically took, uh, every room of your home mm-hmm. and went through it. And she was like, her criteria, like Marie Kondo is like, does it spark joy? Mm-hmm. But it's, do I like it 70%? Because mm-hmm. not everything you're going to like 100%. But, right. and then is it useful or beautiful? Mm-hmm. And then um, if not, she would say, like, bless someone with your excess. So like, yeah. can it be thrifted? Donate. Can it be right. gifted? And so, and she um, learned these things in New Zealand. So she called it the Biffer. Like you put oh, it in yeah. a biffer box. And so yeah. I always, ever since my kids were little, like before I had kids even, I would have this little basket by my front door is the biffer box. And we would take things to the thrift store. And just yesterday, my oldest came up and said, I have a bag of stuff. And I'm like, okay, put it by the front door. So um, we didn't have a lot of duplicates yeah. anyway. So then when I read Marie Kondo's book, like probably five years ago, I was like, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. And, but then it kind I kind of Marie kondo my whole life. <laughs> right. I think <laughs> I that's like, what you start to do. <laughs> like no, if it doesn't bring me joy, it doesn't stay. Right. Cause we were created to live lives of joy. Yeah. That's my, that's my word for the year. I know that's kind of like silly to No, it's. I not mean, some silly. people have words, some people don't, but um, mm-hmm. you know, I really just in the last few years have said, and I don't, I pray about it. I just, I don't really just come up with a word, but man, talk about alignment. I mean, joy, little things. I'm like, it'll say joy. And I've never noticed it there before. And it's in my home already. And I'm like, okay, that's, I mean, that's my word. I am just here. And my husband always says like, you need to find joy in the little things in life. Like that's how you're going to have to start being happy because there were some times I'm an, I'm a very extroverted, talkative person. Um, and there are times where being a stay at home mom is really hard because I, the only people I get to talk to are my kids, um, some days, you know? Um, and so those were the days where I was like, really not a happy person. Um, but yeah, now I'm, I mean, that's probably seven or eight years ago, but yeah, joy, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's, it's interesting as I, continue to help people and, you know, tidying up comes up quite a bit. And yeah. just, if it does not bring you joy, get it out. Yeah. So, yeah. but I love the and Biffer so, box. Yeah, I do too. I, I know. Love it. It's, and then it's fun to say. Yeah. <laughs> so that helps me. Yeah. And like, if another thing I do is I try to build times of self-care into my mm-hmm. day because then that way I'm not working all the time or only resting, but there's like a flow of like, okay, we do this. Now we rest. And, and I've even learned recently to play first Mm -hmm. and then work because then you cultivate all that joy and you get all that energy out with the kids and then they're ready to settle down. When, when we would start our homeschool day, trying to hit it right off the bat, I'd always be fighting, but I want to just play with my Legos. Like I want right. to, and I naturally want to do my creative things in the morning and then settle in in the afternoon as well. So once yeah. I, I started like building that in, 
it's been really valuable. So build in times with friends, like make meals together, then right. you have somebody to play with. And I think, I of. think it's important too. Like when I say time inventory for me, I had to make a joy list. What things bring me joy? Because not every day am I going to be able to take a bath and, and sit and listen right. to an audio, you know, an audible book. Um, but what else brings me joy? Listening to a book, or playing with my kids like ping pong or spending one-on-one -on -one time with my husband or, um, you know, just shutting the door and locking it to go to the bathroom by myself. That brings me joy. I mean, <laughs> who knew? I mean, it's these little things that I'm like, I can, I can add these into my day and no one's going to get hurt from it. But I had to actually write the list of what, what was bringing me joy. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Because for a long time, and I was like, I don't even know what I need to do. And it goes back to sometimes you just need to fill your cup before you empty, you know, before you start yes. passing it out. Yeah. Cause you, you know? can never pour from a, an, an empty, empty you can never give somebody something you don't give yourself. Yeah. And like, so ideally we're getting our cup filled from our creator and then mm -hmm. we have all this love to give to others but it's a process. It's a learning experience. And like you were saying at the beginning, having so much grace, we've been mm -hmm. given grace mm -hmm. to never have to be perfect. And when my kids were little, I thought it was about being perfect. And that that was what made God happy is yeah. so not, I mean, do I want my kid to be perfect while they learn and never fall? Mm -hmm. Or do I want them to come to me right. and climb up in my lap and like snuggle and like mm -hmm. talk and play, you know, that's, that's exactly how it is with our creator. You know, yeah. we have those times, so it's so good, but it's a learning process. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Like you it, and you know, it doesn't just happen, you know, in one week you're like, Oh, I got this time blocking thing, or I've got this like mm -mm. amazing, like I've got a schedule worked out. Like, again, it's seasonal. It's, it could be just annually, like it, it's going to switch and it takes time to recognize like, what does bring me happiness and joy? Like, and it, that might change, that might change too, you know, absolutely. Per so sometimes just filling the diffuser and yeah. saying, how, do, what do I want to feel today? What kind of yeah. energy do I want to invite into my home? Like you were saying, you put um, blue tansy, black spruce and bergamot in there. Mm -hmm. I like all last week I went super basic and I did peppermint and wild orange. Absolutely. And again, I was like, oh, I forgot how much I love these together. Yeah. And I was able to teach a little meditation workshop with oils to some middle schoolers this week. It I was love so that. rad. And we just did wild orange and then I brought in geranium mm. and it was so okay. simple. And then just like, it was kind of risky doing geranium because with somebody's first like oil experience, but I just felt really inspired that that's what they needed. And so I did and it yeah. worked out good. And there were some kids who walked in, they were like, Oh, nope, it smells funny in here. And some kids were like, what is that? Uh -huh. And like loved it. So oh, I love that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to share before we wrap up? I think that's it. I think, you know, just the main things like give yourself some grace. Um, this is a learning process and it's going to change and that's okay. You know, just keep going after it. The small little habits create success. And so feel free to, um, to tweak it, you know, as Nicole was saying at the beginning, like just because we're saying Sunday is a good, a great day to rest and plan. I mean, it's okay if you can do it on Tuesday too. Like that's okay. Yeah. Just take the basic and the knowledge that we're giving you and fit it into your life where, where you seem, um, where you can. So mm -hmm. love it. And then sometimes just the only thing you can do that day that brings you joy is putting an oil on yeah. or putting an oil in a diffuser or, you know, grabbing a little one who's not feeling well and rolling some lavender over their heart space and some on guard mm -hmm. or breathe on their feet, you know, just and those moments of connection and touch, those bring joy. Oh, and that yeah. was really, I feel like oils were what brought joy back into a, our, our mm -hmm. life experience. Cause we had four kids in five years. It was pretty intense. Yeah. And, and I think I heard you say 
pretty similar that oils are kind of your your main staple as well. Oh yeah, yeah. It's funny because real quick, I'll tell you the story. Um, we were exposed to kind of a a big thing over the weekend and some major germs, I should say. Mm. And I we we got word of it on Monday, and I said, okay, everyone's gonna lay down on the massage table. I'm gonna give you all an aroma touch. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of get through that. And so there's five people. I gave five aroma touches that night. Good and job. I, listen, I was so spent. I was like, oh, that's a lot. Physical touch is like my very last love language. Like, okay. Very yeah. Last one. Uh, so yesterday morning at like 5 a.m., I thought, you know what? I'm going to go get a massage. And I did. And I, it was like, I felt so much better. And, but you know, just still this morning, my kids are like, thank you so much, mom, for that aroma touch. Like it totally changed my week. Woohoo! My, my five-year-old said that. And I was like, you know what? There are some generational things that have happened in my family. Mm -hmm. And I think that I'm able to stop them. And yes, and I'm, I'm working on that for sure. So yeah. That is That's, my, that brings me the most joy is breaking yes. generational, yeah, generational cycles and mo like changing it forward. Yeah. So real quick, I'll share, we, I had a call with a gal, she was actually going to do a session for me, but it, we just realized like she actually wanted, needed to receive a mm. session. So um, we were break, working on breaking the, the generational cycle of wanting to show our kids love through f comfort food mm -hmm. that wasn't making any of us feel good. And it wasn't mm -hmm. supporting our bodies in this new, you know, like we, we live in a world where our food doesn't come from oh. happy farms. It comes from a lot of, you know, things that as energy healers, we can feel those things. And then just, you know, all the allergies, the autoimmune that is mm -hmm. popping up. It's food is actually creating dis-ease in us instead of health and nourishment. And right. so you know, just grieving that, like you were saying earlier, like it was hard in the beginning when you had your kids, like we, there's a time of grieving when we change these cycles of life and seasons of life. And that's okay. Like the earth kind of looks like she goes through a grieving process in the winter, but then when spring comes, it's this whole new life. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's what we do is, and, and we basically landed on, we create love in our home through touch and the oils so smell and touch yeah. and your your generational you know our our grandparents did it through taste and smell mm -hmm. but it they're all the senses and they all right. communicate love and sometimes and we're changing the words that we speak over our children that were spoken over us as curses we're speaking blessings yeah so i'm all about that we could do a whole i mean that's a whole nother that. call yeah. right <laughs> So just to whet everyone's appetite for future conversations. Right. Oh, thank you, Sudi. I've loved well, thank this. Thank you. Thanks for sharing your morning. Yes, anytime. All right. Thanks so much. Have a You're good day. Welcome. You too.